Hey guys, today we're finally going to tackle the blackberry situation in the back of the yard. If you forget what that's like, let's turn around and look at the mess we're dealing with. This whole corner is completely covered in Himalayan blackberries, so the job today is to get rid of them so they don't spread to the rest of the yard. I've got a helper with me outside today. Say hello, Sully. You gonna help, Sully? You gonna help? You gonna help me? I don't think Sully knows what's going on. So in my experience, the topic of invasive species can actually be a little bit controversial in um, like gardening and ecological circles, just because there's a sort of fine line between a non-native and an invasive species. There is a difference though, in that an invasive species is one that will completely take over an environment that's ideal for it and crowd out all of the native species around it and thus harm the other native wildlife. So it will take over to the point that there's not a lot of food for the birds or the bugs or other animals versus a non-native species that is not invasive doesn't have that same aggressive impact on its environment. So it might live well in an environment, but it won't actually crowd out the native species to the point that it's harmful. There's some people who are fairly hardcore in their gardening where they only want to plant native species, and that's sort of what I did last summer as a job in restoration, where we would remove anything non-native and only plant native plants. And that has a place if you're trying to do restoration work and um, restore an environment back to more of a untouched by human state, which is also a bit of a controversial issue because everything has been touched by humans at some point. Anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> so basically in this yard, I've decided to get rid of the blackberries that are technically an invasive species here because I don't want Himalayan blackberries in my yard and I will be planting other non-native species like raspberries, maybe some thornless blackberries, but not invasive ones. So not the ones that will spread to my neighbor's yards and cause problems for them. And that gets into another issue of invasive species and why it might be a good idea to remove them in your yard is that they don't just affect your yard, they also affect your neighbor. It can spread under the fence or by seed to other people's yards in your neighborhood who might have not wanted to deal with that plant. So we have two types of invasive blackberries here in southwestern BC. This one is the Himalayan blackberry and you can see it's putting on its spring growth now. So I actually missed the window of optimal time for digging these out. It's best to dig them out when they're more dormant in the winter. It's just easier. They haven't developed as many new roots and fresh shoots and it's just less plant matter to, re to remove. So the Himalayan blackberry can be identified by these clusters of five or six leaves and they're also identifiable because their canes are faceted on the edges. So you can see here that there are actually facets. Let's see if I can get it. Facets to this cane. See how it has sides? It's not perfectly round. It also has these really aggressive thorns. So that's how you identify Himalayan blackberry. The other invasive blackberry is called evergreen blackberry and it has leaves that almost look like a maple leaf in their shape, but they also have the faceted canes. Both of these invasive species also climb quite tall and so they can form thickets. And we have an example of a thicket over in the corner of our yard that I can show you. Over in this corner in our neighbor's yard, they have quite a dense, tall thicket of invasive Himalayan blackberries. So that's what will happen if you just let them do their thing. Okay, so now that you know about why I'm removing the blackberries and how to ID the invasive species of blackberries, we should talk about how you actually go about removing them so they don't come back. So the main thing to remember is that both of these invasive types of blackberries can reproduce vegetatively, which means that they can form a new plant from any part of the old plant. So if you leave any part of the plant, like a cane or a leaf or part of the root ball in the ground, it can just make another blackberry plant. So your problem will continue. So the best bet is to actually dig out as much of the plant as possible so that you don't have any plant matter left in the ground. And like I mentioned earlier, I had a job last summer where we removed blackberries and that's how we did it so that we didn't have to keep coming back to a site over and over again to 
redo the work we'd already done. Sometimes you do get blackberries coming back, so it is usually a two or three step process to actually get them out of a site, but it's easier than just cutting them back to the ground because you'll be coming back every single year and you'll just keep getting blackberries every year. It doesn't work very well to just cut them back to the ground. I should mention that obviously they also reproduce by seed when their berries get eaten by birds and then the, the birds spread the seed around. Um, so that's how they end up showing up in places where you didn't have blackberries before. There is a native species of blackberry, it's called trailing blackberry, and it looks very different than the invasive blackberries. It doesn't climb as much, it doesn't have thick faceted canes, its canes are round in profile, and they're sort of like a purplish color, so they're very different looking. Their thorns are also a lot less aggressive in appearance. And they trail along the ground, hence the name trailing blackberry. They also will trip you in a forest, so it's like a tripping blackberry. All right, so the first step anytime you're tackling a blackberry project is to just cut all the canes to about a foot above the ground so that they're easier to access and dig out the root balls. So that's what I'll do first. Because a lot of it is starting to grow into the gravel, I can just kind of pull out a lot of the roots. This um, cane was coming from another root bundle, another root ball, another plant, and it hit the ground at this point, and then it rooted. And then from that root, another plant started to grow. So you could see how it just kind of hops around with runners like a strawberry, but like an evil strawberry.
I just wanted to take a break and show you how thick these canes can actually get. And this is not the thickest cane I've seen. When they're old, they get quite woody, like down here. They become almost like a tree trunk. But here's my thumb for scale. I'm touching it right now, so that's, it's the thickness of my thumb. And you see the facets really clearly here. Yeah, these ones are super nasty. So there we go, I got them all cut down. I'll show you what that looks like. So see how I just cut it so there's about a foot of stem left? That's just so it's easier to dig out, but then I leave them enough that I can actually tell where the plants are because otherwise I could just lose them in the grass or the rocks and I wouldn't know where to dig. So basically I've just got a spade and I'll do my best to dig out as much of the root ball as I can get. Sort of the root ball core so hopefully now it won't come back hey. <laughs> so of course blackberries aren't actually evil obviously that was kind of a joke um, what they really are is opportunistic so if they have a an exposed disturbed site they're going to take over so really, the only way to permanently get rid of blackberries is to shade them out with something else because they will take over any sunny disturbed site if they're in the area. So you could plant something else that feeds the birds, like oso berry, for instance. That's a good option. But or salmon berry, basically anything that's going to shade the ground will prevent the blackberries from spreading as opportunistically.
That's a good one. <laughs> So that pretty much does it for that corner. You can see that giant pile of clippings there. That's all the blackberries I removed. It's pretty huge. I am under no illusions that they won't come back. There are some places where I couldn't dig them out because they were under the fence, so I had to just cut them off at ground level. So they'll definitely come back there, but I'll just keep clipping them at ground level and eventually they'll stop coming back. So to sum up, if you wanna remove blackberries and you don't want them to come back, you have to remember that they like exposed sunny areas with disturbed soil. So to get rid of them permanently, you're gonna to have to shade them out. To remove them, ideally dig them up, get as much of the root as possible. If you can't dig them up, cut them off at the ground level and just keep cutting them off year after year and eventually they'll die out. Also, they're not evil, they're just opportunistic. They do have some ecological function when there's no other plants around. So for instance, blackberries, they provide habitat and forage for some animals. But of course there are native species that do that same ecological function. So if you want native species, it's always good to replace your invasive species with natives. So long-term, the solution is that we're replacing the fence because it's in terrible condition. And when we do that, I'm going to put in a rhizome barrier along the edge, which is basically just like a sheet of metal down into the ground that stops plants from spreading across fence lines because the neighbors have blackberries in their yard. I'm gonna plant cane fruit on my side and I don't want their blackberries and they probably don't want my cane fruit. And it just solves the problem for both of us. Some other invasives in our area, Southwestern BC, that are good to get rid of is ivy because it climbs trees and it'll eventually kill them and then a dead tree can fall. Um, lamium is a real pain. I've been trying to remove lamium from my parents' yard for years. It just spreads like crazy. I know a lot of people think it's pretty, but it will be your worst nightmare. Don't plant lamium. What else is invasive here? Holly. It's invasive here too. You'll find it deep in the forest where you don't think there's any invasives. You'll just find holly plants because the birds eat the berries and then they drop the seeds and you'll get holly all through your forest. It's a white vine. It has white flowers. Basically it's up to you whether you want to remove your invasives or not. It depends on whether they're providing a function for you. But it is a bit of a controversial debated topic and there are some plants on the invasives list that I personally don't remove because I don't find them problematic and I actually find them useful. So do your research and decide what you want to remove and then go look up best practices for removing it. I hope you learned something today and good luck removing your own invasive species. Bye. And for those of you hoping to get garden updates on vegetable growing, this is what my garden looks like right now. I haven't even moved them. I haven't filled them up. It's been such a giant job just cleaning this place up that I haven't even planted my peas. My plants still seem to be doing okay in their pots though, so they'll just have to hang out there a little bit longer.